Wow. Good afternoon, everybody. Always excited to have Governor Cuomo here on Long Island. We got a great program for you today. Uh, I'm kicking it off. I'm going to introduce the governor and our two county executives, Laura Kerr and Steve Ballone, are going to speak. Uh, first, as always, got a couple of acknowledgments I'd like to do. Uh, first, um, I want to thank our host, uh, dear friend and brother, and he's also a member of the LIA Board of Directors, and that's the president of SUNY Old Westbury, Calvin Butts. Let's give Calvin a big round of applause. We have our Nassau and Suffolk County executives, Laura Kern and Steve Ballone with us. We got a friend who's traveled from Buffalo. I met him last year, a great guy, a suburban Democrat, Tim Kennedy. And we got our Senate delegation. Some of them are still en route, but we have uh, John Brooks, Todd Kaminsky, Jimmy Gorin, Anna Kaplan, Kevin Thomas, and Monica Martinez. Let's give them a round. <laughs> Assemblyman Tony Garso. Tony. O Oyster Bay Supervisor Joe Saladino. My good friend from Labor, the President of the Nassau Suffolk Building Trades, Matty Arisich. We have Lorene Harris and Kyle Strober from the Association of Better Long Island. And Tessa Holtz and Diane Scalza from the Long Island Board of Realtors. And all of our other local uh, mayors and supervisors and officials and friends from business and labor, uh, we welcome you all. So give everybody a round of applause. Okay, um, so a um, couple of things I want to say. Um, uh, the governor has really been a true champion of Long Island. You know, he was here just three weeks ago. He was prophetic in terms of what could happen here uh, when I think the terrible, outrageous, whatever pejorative you want to use uh, for the Amazon decision occurred. But that's not our narrative. Our narrative, Governor Cuomo has been helping us build our narrative for the last eight years. He's really been a true champion of Long Island. He is modernizing our infrastructure. He is investing in our economy and is supporting our efforts to create a research corridor here and build our two hubs at the Nassau Coliseum and in Ronkonkoma. He's protecting our environment and our water resources. He's balanced eight budgets in a row and they've all been approved on time. We have, we have high job growth and low unemployment. He's lowering the tax burden on the middle class families. He has uh, fought to address high taxes and has championed the successful property tax cap. The tax cap is working. We need it to stay competitive. It's time we make it permanent. And the LIA is uh, proud to join the governor in this fight. It is the LIA's number one priority this year and we look forward to working with all of you to make sure that it, uh, it's made permanent. So now let's give a big Long Island welcome to Governor Andrew Cuomo. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's my pleasure to be here today. And uh, as Kevin said, to our host, the head of uh, SUNY Westbury, Calvin Butts, who is a member of the Long Island Association Board of Directors. He's also a reverend, so I call him before every election, and I say, <laughs> please help me with the LIA, and if you could pray to the higher authority, please. Calvin Butts, let's give him a round of applause. Kevin Law, who does a fantastic job, not just for the Long Island Association, but he's also been the uh, co-head of the Regional Economic Development Corporation with Stu Rabinowitz. He has done great, great work for Long Island. He's really brought it all together. Kevin Law. We have our great Suffolk County Executive, Stephen Ballone. Uh, and our other great 
County Executive. I tease them as the dynamic duo, Laura Curran, but give her a round of applause. I also want to thank County Executive Curran for her great work the other night uh, of the Long Island Railroad uh, accident, which was uh, horrific. Uh, but she was there, she was on the scene, and she was a great help. So let's give her a round of applause, please. I'd like to give you a quick uh, update on where we are in the state and ask for your help and support. We are about six weeks into the legislative session. We're about one month from doing the state budget. And the state budget is more than a budget. It's basically the whole action plan for the year. The legislature's done good work already over the past six weeks. They passed the Reproductive Health Act, which was important, the Child Victims Act, the DREAM Act, uh, Voting Rights Act, so people can actually vote now. And we have early voting, finally, in the state of New York. So we're excited about that. Yeah, that deserves applause. We are going to do criminal justice reform uh, before the session is out, and we need that desperately. Uh, but the budget is also primarily about the economy, and it is the economy that drives all else. I like to say the economy is the engine that pulls the train. If you are not creating economic activity, you don't have a tax base for the county executives to do their good work. You don't have opportunity for young people to stay. You're not bringing businesses in. You have to grow that economy. And we have worked harder at that than any administration in the history of the state of New York, I'm proud to say, with good success. First of all, we totally changed the way the state did economic development. The old way was you'd have some bureaucrats up in Albany saying, I think this is good for Long Island. How would they know what's good for Long Island, right? So the regional economic development councils, Kevin Law, Stuart Rabinowitz, they bring together the best business minds, the academic minds, local elected officials, came up with a business plan. The state then invested about a billion dollars. It generated about $4 billion in economic activity. And it was, as Kevin said, a full comprehensive economic development plan for the entire island area, right? The old mentality of, well, you have Nassau and you have Suffolk, and there's a line in the middle. The line is only on a map. It doesn't exist in reality. It's one region. It's one economy. Either the whole island goes up or the island goes down. Uh, we started with transportation. We're rebuilding the Long Island Railroad, the second track, the third track. They talked about it for 50 years. Parts of Long Island Railroad have one track. You know when you hear the report in the morning, Long Island Railroad, there's a delay, it's two hour. One track. So if a squirrel happens onto the track and has a heart attack, everything stops for two hours. Building the second track and the third track, we're redoing 50 stations. We're going to prioritize a project called East Side Access, which brings the trains into the east side of Manhattan that was long overdue, and we're going to get that done. What we've done on the environment with water quality and partnering with County Executive Ballone on bringing a real water and sewer system to Suffolk County. Uh, we're doing environmental work in cleaning up our bays and our shorelines with shellfish restoration. We have what I think is the next research triangle that drove North Carolina. We have it right here with Cold Spring Harbor and Hofstra and Stony Brook all working together. So that investment part has been working very well. The second piece that we did was we lowered taxes. Why? Because for many years, New York had the reputation as the high tax state. And you know what people would say about Long Island? I can't afford to live there. I just can't afford it. You had people who were paying property taxes that were higher than their mortgage. I can't tell you how many families I met who said, you know what, I love it, but I just can't afford it, or young families trying to buy the first home, who just couldn't afford it. We were pricing people out of New York. And businesses were saying, this is the highest tax state. I don't have to stay here. I can move. It's not like the old days, 
where you'd have a big factory and they were there by the foundation and they couldn't really get up and, and leave. Now these companies, they can pick up their laptop and, and get on a plane and locate anywhere. So we are in a national competition for jobs. Kevin mentioned the Amazon transaction. Amazon just raised it to a new level. What Amazon literally did was they said publicly, we have 25,000 jobs. 25,000 jobs is more jobs than any economic development project in the history of the state has created, okay? The next largest single project was 1,000 jobs. So Amazon said, we have 25,000 jobs. And they say to all the states and all the cities, you tell us what you will offer us to come to your state and your city. Amazon publicized it. But that happens every day with every business. We get calls from Long Island businesses who say, well, North Carolina just called me. And they said they'll relocate me and they'll give me a lease and they'll only give me this, uh, charge me this in taxes. So we are competing every day for every business. We're competing to attract and we're competing to keep. Because literally what happens is states call and they try to steal your businesses. Not that we would ever do that to another state. <laughs> Laura Curran once in a while does that, but I never did that. <laughs> but that is the new reality of how the economy works. So we had to lower taxes, and we did. We have state spending down to the lowest level increases in history, <laughs> under 2%. And because, because we did that, then we could lower taxes, and we've lowered taxes across the board to a point where everyone's taxes are lower today than the day I took office. Every tax bracket in the state of New York. And it's working because the numbers prove that it's working. Today, the state of New York has more private sector jobs than it has ever had in the history of the state of New York, 8.2 million. Today, Long Island, hold your applause. Today, Long Island has 1.1 million jobs, more jobs than Long Island has ever had in the history of Long Island. We started unemployment on Long Island was 7.2%. Today, it is 3.1%, okay? So that economic engine is running. We're making the investments. We have taxes down. What we have to do is keep it going. And it's actually at a critical point. Why? The federal government passed federal tax reform over a year ago. And everybody was arguing about the tax reform bill as they should have. It was a big tax giveaway to the rich and to the rich corporations. Buried inside that tax reform was a little provision that nobody really understood. We refer to it as SALT, S-A-L-T. What the provision said is you can no longer deduct your state and local taxes from your federal income tax. Okay, that's a complicated sentence and people tend to uh, glaze over it. Up until this act, you would pay your state taxes, you pay your property taxes, you would then deduct that from your income and you would pay your federal income tax on what was left after you paid your taxes. The federal government said, no more. Now we are going to tax you on the taxes that you pay to the state and pay in property taxes. All right? Think about that. First time since 1861 when President Abraham Lincoln started the income tax that the federal government is taxing your tax. It is literally double taxation. It is outrageous. It's never been done. It was purely political. 
It happens to affect the Democratic states. It happened to have been done by an all-Republican Congress and a Republican president. Uh, but it is, I believe, unconstitutional. It was pure partisan politics, except it is very, very destructive to the state of New York. It costs us $15 billion more in taxes, $15 billion more. Because now think of your property tax bill. Now you have to pay federal income tax on that bill. And your federal income tax can be as high as 30%, which means your property tax bill just went up 30%. We're suing the federal government on it. We are working with our federal officials to change it. I'm working with governors all across the country to rally to change it because it will, if we do not repeal it, it could affect the long-term trajectory of this state because we've been lowering taxes. We've been doing all this work. In one signature, the president threw it all out the window and talk about unjust. Think about this, 50 states, 40 of the states get more from the federal government than they give. Only 10 give more than they take. 10 give, 40 take. Guess what state generates more money for the federal government than any other state in the United States of America state of New York. We give more than any other state, $35 billion more than we get back, and then they pass this tax provision which penalizes us even more. In this competition that we have with other states, it now makes it much harder for us to compete. North Carolina doesn't have this. Florida doesn't have this. Georgia doesn't have this. It raised our taxes. So we're at a critical moment because everything we have done right, they are trying to derail. And it's more important than ever that we say to New Yorkers and businesses, calm down, I understand what happened, but feel stable in, in what we're doing in the state of New York. There are two priorities we have to get done. The first is we have to make the property tax cap permanent. The property tax cap. <laughs> property taxes are the number one tax in the state of New York. They're about two and a half times what people normally pay for their state income tax. Nassau, Suffolk, Westchester, some of the highest property taxes in the United States of America, okay? They were going up five, six, seven percent every year. And we were literally taxing people out of their homes. We said six years ago, we're going to have a property tax cap no more than two percent unless the locality has a super majority to override it. And the localities don't want to override it because they don't want the political uh, ramifications. So those increases went from five, six, seven percent down to two percent. That's a totally different situation when it only goes up to 2%. It's actually a livable situation. We've had it in place. Uh, I want to say this year, in the law, the 2% tax cap is permanent. So when people are worried about the increase on the federal side, they know that it's going to be lower on the state side. I also want to say to the middle class families in New York, who are the ones who are suffering, the federal government took care of the rich with their tax break. Meanwhile, the middle class is always the one who gets stuck. I want to say we understand your problem. We understand your pressure. I want to cut middle class taxes again this year so people have confidence. Right now, if you make up to $150,000 a year, you pay 6.85%. I want to reduce that down to 5.5%. And for those who make up to 300,000, right now you pay 6.85. I want to reduce that down to 6%. So we say to people, we know you're struggling. We know you're struggling with your taxes. We have the permanent property tax cap 
and we're going to cut middle class taxes. That is the smartest thing for the state to do today. That has to be done in the state budget. The state budget is done in about one month. This is going to be polit politically controversial. Everybody has an opinion, especially in New York. Everybody has two opinions. <laughs> Depends on the day. We need this tax cut, and we need a permanent property tax cap. And I need your support to make it happen. We have our state senators. We have Todd Kaminsky, John Brooks, Jim Gorin, Anna Kaplan, Kevin Thomas, Monica Martinez. They are all 100% supportive of both the tax cut and making it a permanent tax cap. They are going to be warriors for tax fairness. Many of the assembly members are wholly supportive. Tony Dorso is here today. He's a 100% supportive for tax fairness. We have Senator Tim Kennedy from the faraway land of Buffalo, <laughs> still located in the state of New York. He is here to join the coalition of Long Island senators in support of a permanent tax cap and the middle class tax cut. So let's give him a round of applause. He's also here because he's chair of the Transportation Committee. And I know because he's a good guy and an earnest guy, I know he's going to give us more help with the Long Island Railroad. So let's give him a round of applause for that. <laughs> but with the State Senate holding firm, we're going to make it a priority. We are committed to not getting a budget done without this tax cap being made permanent and a middle class tax cut. It is essential, and we will get it done. Everything is pointed in the right direction. We're making great progress on Long Island. I am not a Long Islander by birth. Technically, I am, because Queens is technically on Long Island, if you want. And I was Eastern Queens, so I was almost over the border anyway. Uh, but I know Long Island very well and I've been involved with it for a long time. I have never felt the energy and the progress that we are feeling now. All the arrows are pointed in the right direction. Jobs are going up, unemployment is going down, taxes are going down, the environmental work is getting done, transportation is better than ever, we have businesses coming in. We have to keep it going. We have to keep it going. And tax fairness is what New Yorkers deserve and exactly what we need at this moment. Together, we will get it done. But I need your help. Thank you, and God bless you. Please welcome NASA County Executive Laura Curran. Good afternoon, everybody. It's a real pleasure to be here. Thank you, Steve Ballone, for coming to Nassau. Steve is a great partner. Uh, we work together really, really well, and I think the governor is right. There is a border, but uh, we cross it often, and it's a wonderful partnership, so, so thank you very much. I couldn't think of a better partner. And thank you, Governor Cuomo, for coming to Long Island, for fighting for our families, and fighting for tax fairness. As we try to grow the tax base, attract business, create a more business-friendly environment, diversify our housing stock, uh, tax fairness is incredibly important to, to accomplishing that. So from day one, the governor has been a fighter, some might even say a true champion for Long Island taxpayers. The middle class tax cuts championed by the governor have, are going to continue to deliver much needed relief to our taxpayers here in Nassau. The governor's property tax cap was an, an historic victory for Long Island. Um, I was just speaking with the governor. It's estimated that about $8 billion has remained in taxpayers' pockets since this was enacted. That is a big deal. In Nassau County, we are laser focused on holding the line on taxes. Our budget for this year includes no property tax increase. 
So we are very fortunate to have a governor who recognizes the challenges facing our hardworking residents and is with us to make a real difference for Long Island families. I am proud to join the governor in calling for tax fairness for middle class families, especially, especially under the weight of the SALT cap deductions. We must take action to ease the burden on our families. So thank you for fighting for this. We support you and we stand with you. Thank you. Please welcome Suffolk County Executive Steve Ballone. Thank you. Please sit down. <laughs> it is great to be here with uh, uh, President Calvin Butts and uh, my good friend uh, Kevin Law. Thank him for his great leadership. Uh, and of course, my partner, Laura Curran, who's doing an amazing job, I believe, as Nassau County Executive. And to all my colleagues here. And of course, we're all uh, very pleased to be able to welcome Governor Cuomo back uh, to Long Island once again. And this is for a really important subject because we know that this issue is the one that every working class, middle class family on Long Island thinks about and cares about. And we know it's the biggest challenge. The governor is exactly right. Um, we have made incredible progress here. The investments that, that he has made, uh, the work that's been done here in our infrastructure to support our environment, uh, to protect taxpayers, they're all producing incredible results. But success in the future is not guaranteed if we don't make the right decisions. I was proud to support Governor Cuomo's property tax cap when it was being put forward. And I pledged from the very beginning that we would, despite the financial challenges that the county has faced, that we would live within that tax cap because that is what we need to do for working class, middle class families to thrive here on Long Island. And I will tell you this, as Suffolk County Executive, I can tell you, and I talk to families each and every day, making this tax cap permanent is critical for Long Island's future. And that's why I am proud to be here uh, and, and grateful that the governor is once again leading a fight that will make a difference for all families across New York, but particularly here on Long Island. This makes a big difference. And so, as the governor said, we have made incredible progress, but that doesn't mean that progress is going to continue. It means we have to continue to make the right decisions. We have to continue to do the things that the governor has talked about here today. You know, the, the, the SALT uh, cap coming in place at the federal government is an attack on New York. And it's an attack on middle class and working class families. We have to do everything we can do, we can, to protect those families here on Long Island. So Governor, thank you once again for your leadership. Thank you for being here. And, and I know everyone here is gonna fight and support this critical effort for Long Island. Thank you everyone for coming today and being a part of the program. Thank you. And I noticed that, um, uh, I know Senator Tim Kennedy is here, but my colleagues from the uh, Senate are here, and I want to thank them for their leadership and the work that, that they are doing. Uh, Senator Todd Kaminsky, Senator John Brooks are here from Albany. And I know they support making the tax cap permanent. Thank you, Senator Kennedy. Thank you, Senator Brooks, for your leadership. Give them a big round of applause. You guys stand up. They are fighting for us on Long Island. They are fighting for the property tax cap to make it permanent here. And again, thank you everyone for being here. Thank you for your support and let's win this fight. Thank you.